Welcome to Holistic Human Performance Podcast. My name is Jenna Bradshaw, where we talk all things holistic health, wellness, spirituality, fitness, meditation, energetics, and so much more to help you become the healthiest version of yourself. Let's dive in. This is not medical advice. This is simply to help you on your journey through health, fitness, and wellness. I hope this helps. You can complement this with anything that you are doing currently in your life. Enjoy. Hey guys, Jenna here, and I am so excited to announce that the Holistic Human Performance Virtual Wellness Center is officially launched. Yup, that's right. We've officially launched. And this is like having a holistic health and energy coach in your back pocket. If you need a five-minute reset, okay, great. What do we have? You need breath work? Okay, great. You need a little bit of mobility flow, nutrition coaching? Great. You can access all of these on-demand videos and self-paced digital courses for a five-day free trial. That's right. I'm giving this to you guys for a five-day free trial so you can try it out see if you like it, see if it works for you, and see if it actually is conducive to your lifestyle and it helps you to create change. It is literally like having me in your back pocket. So again, I'm giving you this for a five-day free trial. Head on over to holistichumanperformance.co and get your free trial today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Holistic Human Performance Podcast. I am your host, Jenna Bradshaw, and today we have a very special guest, Kate Finn. We go way back to my college days when I was competing at Ithaca College. She was, she's a badass, number one. Number two, she taught me so much. She is a mentor to me, a friend. Um, She was in the strength and conditioning room. She was our coach. She was helping us lift heavy and creating stellar programs, which were, I mean, that was seriously, you set the foundation for so many amazing things, Mm -hmm. um, especially in my life. And I'm just so excited to have you on. She is a mentor. She's a coach. She is all the things. She's a mama. And I'm just so excited to have her on. Welcome. Thank you so much. You're going to get me teared up before we even start. (laughs) That's not fair. (laughs) No, I'm so excited to be here and honored that you asked and um, I'm just really grateful. Thank you. You're welcome. So why don't we go into, because I met you in my bomber days, running track and field, throwing the javelin, which we also had that commonality. (laughs) And um, also you certified me in Olympic weightlifting, Mm -hmm. which was super cool. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you talk about your journey and like how you even got started? And you also coached football. Am I correct? Correct. Yes. Which was at a college level, which is really, really dope. Um, So why don't you talk about like how you even got into the fitness industry Mm. and like wanting to work with athletes? Yeah. uh, It was not planned. It was (laughs) not the plan, I should say, because I feel like it never is. Yeah. Um, So we met in 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, It was my first year as a grad student at Ithaca. And I was in my late twenties going back to college uh, for my master's. Uh, So rewind a few years uh, earlier, early to mid twenties, I was you know, former college athlete, lots of injuries, was not an athlete anymore, was dealing with all of the grief that kind of comes from that and changing your whole life Mm -hmm. uh, and was really unhealthy, didn't really understand health because I'd only ever understood competing. Right. Walked into this little gym in the woods uh, in a barn uh, and it was back, uh, I guess it was 2010, 2011 when CrossFit Mm -hmm. wasn't really known yet. Uh, and it happened to be a CrossFit gym. And thankfully the um, gentleman that was the owner and the coach had his doctorate in exercise physiology. And really one of my first mentors in this industry, I would consider him, he changed my life, both from a physical standpoint, from a career standpoint, all of it. It just, um, I knew I had wanted more than just going to the gym and and moving on machines. I knew that much at least. And I walked in there and I got that. I got 
the knowledge on how to move my body correctly, that I could lift weights, that I was strong and powerful. And um, it just set my path onto the sport of weightlifting. Mm. And I started training under him for that. And I became a competitive weightlifter. Mm. And uh, so the sport of weightlifting, that's the sport that we see in, in the Olympics versus going to the gym and lifting weights. Right. So that's the snatch, the clean and the jerk. And um, started to get really competitive at that and pretty high level. And he kept pestering me through the years to come coach for him, come coach for me, come coach for me. And I, he knew I was a coach and ready to be a coach before I did. And I did. And um, that's really what sent me to Ithaca. I, I changed my career. I pivoted. I applied for the master's program there. I was really drawn to it because it was the connection between mind and body at the time. Mm. It was at the time, it was one of the only master's programs in the country that had both sports psychology and exercise phys- physiology. Uh, and that's how I ended up in the weight room with you all. Uh, the grad program saw that I had was a weightlifting coach and they're like, oh, you must know how to be a college strength coach. We'll, we'll throw you in the weight room. Uh, and that's how it started. And it, it ended up being the first year of uh, the strength program at Ithaca. So I was one of the kind of founding coaches there as a grad student, which was an incredible opportunity for me. I did a lot of learning. There were a lot of growing pains that first year. Oh yeah. Um, but really, really pivotal. And that's how, so that's how I got into coaching. Uh, and then some really incredible mentors along the way, both Peter, uh, Nathan, who had founded that gym and then my weightlifting coach, Leo taught him. And then, um, Dick Brown, the head, the head coach at strength and conditioning were three of like my really pivotal early career strength coach mentors. And that's how I got into that world of, of strength coaching. So cool. Now, how did you, you actually said a couple of important things. Okay. (laughs) The first one was talking about like how you had all these mentors along the way. And I want to just kind of talk about mentorship and why it's super important for, I mean, you're a mentor to me, I'm a mentor to other people and it's like this whole ripple effect. So why don't we just like unpack what mentor even means and why it's so important for people in there journeys. Yeah. It, it, I mean, that it, it's everything. I think in my mind, it's been everything for me. And that's why then I now operate, um, and live my life as a mentor to other people. That's my hope. That's, that's what I want to offer to young coaches, to young business owners, all of it. Um, it's, it's someone I call myself a coach. I am a coach, but I'm also a mentor, uh, and an educator. And the way I kind of differentiate those three words is especially coach and mentor. Cause I think they overlap a lot. Yeah. Um, often a coach is like an expert in their field and they're doing some teaching and coaching on a specific topic. The difference is a mentor, I think is someone who's also been where you are and has gotten to where you want to go. Mm. And so you can share as a mentor, share that wisdom back of things that you've learned along the way that maybe will help someone either get there quicker or get there more efficiently or just get there with some support. Uh, It's, it's, it's everything. It's everything. I agree. Mentorship is huge. I mean, again, I don't know where I would be without the mentors and they come in all different timelines and things that you don't even expect. And then your path is completely redirected and you're like, wait, how did I get here? (laughs) And like, mentors can show up in a couple, like the same mentor can show up at different seasons. Like who would have ever thought that we would have reconnected around like holistic health stuff and like both be in that world. Like how cool is that? So Uh, cool. And that's the like thing I think I love about coaching and mentorship is that we don't have to like pigeonhole or silo into just like one expertise or one area. At least that's how I operate as a coach and mentor. I consider myself multi-passionate you know, I agree with you. Yeah. You know, I'm not just a business coach. I'm not just a strength coach. I'm not just a life coach. I'm not just a health coach. I, I do it all. And I often do all of it with the same person. Mm, yes. Now I'm curious, how <laughs> did you get into coaching college football? So I, I actually played football in high school. What? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm going to age myself a little here. Uh, middle school. Um, and for, so I played school football for my school district. I was the first female in the the late nineties. So cool. (laughs) And, um, always loved the sport. And when I got into strength and conditioning at Ithaca, uh, around the end of my first year, you know, I just advocated for myself. I knew that if I wanted to stay in the field, uh, 
it would be really important that I had football experience from a strength mm. coaching standpoint. So I shared with Vic that I was really interested in working with the team as like his second. And um, he opened that door for me and I got to know the team. Um, and what's always been really important to me in my life is building authentic relationships with people, whether that's my athletes, my clients, colleagues, and not with the intention necessarily of getting anything from them, but just building that authentic relationship. Often it's those relationships that have, that have opened doors for me um, that then I go in and show my stuff and do my thing with. And um, I built some really incredible relationships with the, the football staff that was at Ithaca at the time. I ended up coaching one of them in weightlifting. He was a colleague and good friend. And when he left Ithaca, he went to another school and I would go out and visit that staff and get to know them and network and, and build relationships. And I got to know the head coach at, at that other school um, and just built a relationship with him. And we connected around coaching philosophies and program philosophies and, and all of that. And fast forward a few years, I had actually stepped away from college athletics and was just consulting. And they, those two went to Hobart and William Smith. So Hobart mm. football and started a new staff there. And um, I ended up taking a full-time job there as the assistant director of leadership programs at the colleges. And my end of my first year there, that head coach that I developed that relationship with, we sat down for coffee one day and he goes, what is it going to take to get you on my staff? And <sighs> what would that look like? And, you know, you know, the X's and O's, but, you know, cause that was my concern. It's like, I didn't play in college. Like, I don't know the sport as well as maybe other coaches. And he goes, you, we can continue to teach the X's and O's. He goes, but I want my players around someone that can be teaching all these other things as well. I want this, I want you to help me build this culture. I want you to be a part of that staff and a part of that mission. And that's what we did. I coached so cool. linebackers there my first year. And then my second year, I was started working with the defensive line and I built the first year program for them, for the team. Um, and then that's when the pandemic hit. So I was remote. Wow. Yeah. Now I'm assuming that made you pivot even further into currently what you're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. That was a part of it. It was, um, I think it was coming for a while before then of just wanting to work for myself and wanting to have a little bit of that freedom and flexibility and start kind of going back to the idea of like tying all the pieces together and not just be like siloed into, you know, now I have these backgrounds and expertises in leadership education and helping people start their businesses and entrepreneurship and um, strength and conditioning, you know, all the health coaching piece, all of those. So, and all along, I was going through some of my own major health issues that I was mm -hmm. navigating. Um, and so the pandemic hit and I had my daughter and it really was just like that final piece for me of like, what, why, what's my, why, why am I doing this? And, and my, why was to have freedom and flexibility to move within my days and, and do things that I enjoy doing and continue to help coach and mentor people and have time with her. And that was that final pivot of, um, yeah, really just what I came back from my maternity leave and went all in on my business, which became businesses and just doing my thing now. So cool. So yeah. what, what exactly are you doing right now? Why don't you tell the listeners? Yeah. So I am a coach and mentor for leaders and business owners. Um, and I really focus in and work and specialize with people who um, are kind of on that constant um, loop of burnout, mm -hmm. wanting to step away from burnout and move into a, a little bit more play and fun and joy while still being successful and helping people figure out what that looks like in their businesses, in their careers, in their lives, um, and really com comboing strategic tools and processes while also doing some of the mindset work and connecting to what your why is and all of that. So still coaching and mentoring. Uh, Love that. Yeah, yeah. Super important. And also, <clears throat> I also want to teach others and the listeners that it's not going to happen overnight. Like look at this whole journey that it took yes. you through to get to the point where 
you know, you're at today, even myself too, where you talk about like pinch, pigeon, pigeon holding yourself. Yeah. Um, I felt that in the fitness industry and I was yes. like, oh, like, I feel like there's more. And I kept getting this feeling of like, okay, there's more to do. Okay. There's more to do. And there's more to share. There's more to learn mm-hmm. and kind of like releasing that, I guess, identity, like that really tight grip that you have on that, I certain identity and you're like, I have to do this. I have to do that. You kind of just got to like, let it go and just like, let it flow. (laughs) Yeah. And that's work in itself. And it's, it's so much work because it's, I don't know if it's the society or or whatever we, we get caught up in this idea of like, this is how things should look. This is how Mm. things have to look. This is how, you know, I should do things because this is what someone else is doing, or this is what they told me I had to do in school or, you know, and often it's like stepping back and getting, and this is a lot of the work I do with clients is like getting really clear on our why. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And most of the time I find people think they know their why until someone asks them and then they can't articulate it. So getting really clear on that why, and then using that why to anchor all of our decisions going forward. And I think the other key important takeaway for listeners is to never make ourselves wrong for wanting to experience different things, right? Like I needed to go through all of those things in order to kind of collect that knowledge and expertise and wisdom. It's still a struggle for me day to day because I often have people in some of these industries I've been in not get what I'm doing now, right? Like, well, you're not a strength coach anymore. It's like, well, I'm always going to be a strength coach. Like I have that experience. I have that knowledge. I have that wisdom. And now I mentor other coaches in that field, right? Um, and so it's it's important to not make ourselves wrong for wanting to change direction or wanting to collect new knowledge because often it's like all of those pieces give you the wisdom and the experiences that you need to then support other people or support yourself, right? Whatever that looks like. Absolutely. That yeah. that's really great. Honestly, I needed to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just funny that you say that because you know I'm just thinking back it's like it's okay to like you know what you said like oh you're not a strength coach anymore it's like yeah I'm a strength coach but I you know it's not my focus anymore and now my focus has shifted right you still help you but you know that's not my main focus here um so that's one of my tools it's one of my tools Right. What's and in your toolbox? That's it. And you may not, I may not operate the way you think a strength coach should, and that's okay. Right. right. Because I'm operating the way I need to. I'm operating in a way that helps me serve other people um, to the highest potential. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. So what's on the radar for you? What are you up to today? Like, today. what are you like in like general? Like what are, yeah. yeah, these days, like, what are you up to? A little bit of everything. Um, I think that's just always going to be my thing. Uh, so I've got my my coaching business, my coaching mentor business. Um, we've got our little homestead that we're building and growing. We've got our little business around. I shouldn't say little. It's 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 quite a lovely business around that. Um, Averly Acres. So we do a lot of fun stuff there. Uh, and then, you know, after slowing down for a few years with the pandemic and having my daughter, I kind of had stepped away from the weightlifting world and coaching coaches there and just recently started getting back on the road to teach certifications, which feels so good because it is such a big part of my passion. Um, but it, I had to really work through that. It, it's okay for that to be a part of this identity. It doesn't have to be my whole identity. So I'm back on the road doing that. But yeah, a lot of what I'm doing right now really is um, I do one-on-one coaching and mentoring. I've got group programs on and off throughout the year. Um, and really just supporting people in growing their vision and leaning into their vision um, a lot of my exploration personally, the last couple of years becoming a mom was first leaning into what I call like my wise woman wisdom error, like really leaning into like trusting my wisdom and trusting everything that I've collected and just also internally know. And then more recently, I've been leaning into this other side of like play, play more and like we all need more play. And so now a lot of my work for myself and my clients is really around like that ebb and flow between um, the discovering your playful wise woman is really what I call it. Mm, That divine feminine. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And being able to ebb and flow in and out of that. And what does that look like? And it doesn't have to be how everyone else defines it. You know, it can be playful one day and like really wise and stoic the next day. And and what, what do you need that all to be? That's so cool. Yeah. I feel like over time too, like even with myself, it was like the development of 
like your masculine energy and mm-hmm. kind of like being able to, I guess, train yes. that side of you. And yeah. now like I've noticed too, especially with, as of late, a lot of like my clients and students that I'm working with, there's now this like shift of stepping into like their divine feminine and being able to, and the development of that and like being Mm -hmm. able to surrender, being able to slow down wise woman and being able to ebb and flow between the two. Yes. That's which is hard. That's (laughs) the key, right. You know, and that was my experience. That's still my struggle. And I think that's still so such a big struggle in our society right now. Cause we go to extremes, right? Like we've been in survival mode and we've learned how to operate in the the masculine and like get things done, get succeed, go after it, be detail oriented, all those type of personalities. And then suddenly we start to get this itch saying like, there's more, there's different, I can do it differently. And so we start to lean into the being and the fluidity and the caretaker. And what I've seen happen with clients, especially is then we go so far into the other extreme And we make ourselves wrong for wanting to lean back into that other space. And again, Mm -hmm. it's that concept of like not making ourselves wrong for anything that we're feeling or doing because they're serving a purpose. And I think the true work, it's work, is is confidently and comfortably being able to float back and forth between that. If we want to, if that's the the frame up we're using today, that between that masculine and that feminine energy, yeah, and that way of being. And for me even within the feminine energy, what I've been exploring. And that's where that, like that playful wise woman is coming from is like that concept of, you know, being playful and then wisdom. And I, I kind of always like use with my clients, the, um, I went on this really incredible business retreat last fall with, with one of my business coaches. And we did, um, a big like ceremony. And one of the visions that came to me was like a white she wolf. Um, like a young white she-wolf, right? Because you always have the vision, like we always, the, the metaphors out there around um, which wolf are you going to feed, right? The yeah. angry, fearful one, or, you know, what I don't even remember what it is, but like stepping away from that metaphor and stepping into this female version of it, of like the white she-wolf. And so like, that's the vision that came to me um, was this animal walking alongside of me and that she could run out and run around and play with butterflies and be curious about what was was coming up on the path. But then as like, soon as I needed her, she could come back and walk right next to me and be full of wisdom and be full of care and be that caretaker. And to be able to like float even within that feminine energy between like those two pieces is like really powerful and really cool. Like, and it's possible. Like it's possible. I think Mm -hmm. we're told all the time. It's not possible. It's it's Mm -hmm. possible. Yeah. It's like, you have an option. You don't have to stick with one or the other. You have that option depending on your environment, your season, Mm -hmm. you know, change is constant. That's the only thing that's constant is change. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, that's the work I do with clients is like, especially business owners. Um, We think that we have to like hustle and burn ourselves out and burn the candle at both ends. Like you can create a business out of like joy and fun and still be successful at it. It's still hard work, right? Don't get me wrong. Like, but there, there are other ways to do it and it is possible to like have both. Absolutely. That's awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah. So are there any words of wisdom that you would like to leave the listeners before we sign off? I think like it all comes back to Anything that you are doing, whether it's, you know, exploring health, exploring life, exploring business, whatever, you know, new transition or endeavor you're, you're taking on is trusting and being confident that you as who you are is enough and like really leaning into and exploring that. And that, that goes back to all the concepts we were just talking about. It goes back to the why you're doing something. It goes back to not making yourself wrong for anything. It's that when we can connect with ourselves and trust ourselves and know ourselves and hear that inner wisdom and listen to it, that, that is enough. Like that is enough. And that will take you so far. It will take you wherever you want, you choose to go with it. So. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for that. You're welcome. So where can people find you? People can find me uh, on Instagram at simply being Kate. 
uh, C-A-I-T, simply being me, simply being Kate is the handle, <laughs> Kate Finn. Um, or you can find me on my website, which is just katefinn.com. And that's C-A-I-T, F is in Frank, I-N-N.com. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. It was such a pleasure. I'm so oh, happy gosh. we got to connect Thank again. You. <laughs> Likewise. Guys, if you like this episode, like, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.